Kuljit Katora, thank you very much indeed for joining us here at Economy Middle East. Could you start by telling us what are the objectives of uh, Boeing here at Airshow this year and what are you showcasing? Yeah, thanks for that question. Well, I think first things first, I think you can sense a real energy around this air show. It's just great when you bring groups of people together with a, a common purpose. And of course, the common purpose here is furthering aviation. And as I say, it's just wonderful to connect with stakeholders at every part of the uh, aerospace life cycle and meet so many you know, friends and colleagues and stakeholders. But in terms of um, this particular air show, Yes, of course. Part of it is we're showcasing our the latest products and services. So, for example, just like last year, we're going to have flying displays by the uh, 777-9. We're also very excited this year because the F-15 QA is going to be on flying display. And also on static display, we've got a 787 in the uh, Riyadh Air livery, uh, along with some other customers' livery as well. well that's very exciting. And here in our exhibit, we have uh, a simulator for the T7A Red Hawk, which is our latest advanced trainer. But the other two really important themes of this air show are sustainability and innovation. So on sustainability, we're obviously very proud once again to uh, sponsor the Aerospace 2050 event. And also on innovation, um, we have partnered with Tawazin to really identify areas where technological advancements required and, and look at startup companies in those spaces. And we've actually got those startups, many of those startups here uh, at the Vista stage. So that's a really exciting aspect as well, because of course, innovation is just key to uh, the growth in aerospace and it's in the lifeblood of aerospace. So bringing in these younger, innovative uh, startup companies is, is hugely important as well. Now, you've touched on it a little bit, but aerospace is an ever-changing environment. How does Boeing manage to keep ahead of the curve? One of our main priorities is to constantly innovate. You know, even through COVID, we still set aside significant sums for R&D investment. If you look at um, what we see the future of aerospace, we believe it, the future is around producibility, sustainability, digital and autonomy. So give it a pick one of those, autonomy. If you look at the uh, clogged up urban areas that we're living in, I mean, I'm sure that when you came to the air show today, you encountered a lot of traffic. Um, advanced air mobility, urban air mobility is something that we really have invested in. We have a company called WISC that is going to be the uh, first company to certify, hopefully, uh, an all electric autonomous aerial vehicle. And we think autonomy is key to that area because in the Boeing view, anything that flies should really be certified at the same level of safety as commercial aircraft. Mm -hmm. So obviously, what could limit the urban air mobility is, is pilots. And so that's why autonomy is just key to scaling that. And that's why we've made those investments. And next to the big question of sustainability, what are some particular initiatives that Boeing is utilizing? The first thing I'd just like to highlight is a publicly available tool called Cascade. Uh, it's publicly available. We're actually going to be doing a fireside chat about Cascade tomorrow. What Cascade shows, it models uh, how different types of uh, activity can really reduce the whole uh, carbon footprint. And so what it will do, for example, you could look at a flight from you know, London to Dubai. You could model whether that is going to be flown on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. You can model whether that's going to be flown on all electric or all hydrogen and see what the life cycle uh, impact is. The near and long term solution is sustainable aviation fuel because we don't have to change anything. We don't have to change the plane. We don't have to change the infrastructure. Whereas if you put, say, electric or hydrogen into that model, of course, we would have to change an awful lot. The technology doesn't currently exist. So again, it's just fascinating to see what the life cycle impact is. But in terms of what we do, um, we, for the last 15 years, have been pioneering uh, sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, here in the UAE, we have really been at the forefront in entering into very significant partnerships, both with academia, with our airline customers, and with regulators really uh, move the needle on uh, the adoption of sustainable aviation fuel. So I'd even go back 10 years and I'll, I'll work on the Sustainable Bioenergy Research Consortium with Khalifa University. 
and Etihad, where we pioneered uh, the, uh, the development of biofuels using uh, saltwater salicornia. And that's a project that's been running for 10 years. Of course, with Emirates, we just uh, recently tested on a 777 uh, one engine on 100% SAF on a demo flight. And that included uh, GE as well, of course, with the engine. And then with Etihad, of course, we've had a, a, a strategic sustainability partnership with them uh, that is centered around the 787 Eco Demonstrator. And we also partnered with the Ministry of Energy on uh, the SAF roadmap that really dealt with power to liquid, which is the, the key way that in the UAE, the key feedstock that's gonna really provide that, um, uh, that ability for, for, for SAF to be produced here in the UAE. And just very recently, we entered into uh, a strategic MOU with Mazda, uh, again, to explore pathways for the industrialization of sustainable aviation fuel. So we've been very active and we're very proud to have been in, uh, in the forefront of all these efforts and we continue to be. And um, at the end of the week, what does success look like for the Dubai Air Show and for Boeing at, uh, when it, this all comes to an end? Look, I think that what success is about at air shows like this is it's really about the momentum that's put into some key areas. So for example, particularly sustainability, you know, we're now gonna bridge into two really important events. First is the ICAO conference on alternate aviation and alternative fuels, which takes place immediately after the air show. And, and of course, after that, there's COP28. So the momentum that we, we generate here in terms of making sure that sustainable aviation is on the agenda should amplify through those. So for me, that's a, a really, really important outcome. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us here at Economy Release, and thank you for your insight.